for Michael Thomas, who suffered a high ankle sprain in week number one on this play right here. And according to our good friend Tom Pelissero of the NFL Network, He's going to miss Monday's game against the Las Vegas Raiders. And we are talking about arguably the best receiver in the National Football League. Voted him last year for the Offensive Player of the Year. And I think that this puts a ton of pressure on everybody else who's catching passes from Drew Brees. I wouldn't be surprised in the slightest if the Raiders find a way to beat Drew Brees and the New Orleans Saints coming up on Monday night. Lost in the shuffle from New Orleans winning the football game on Sunday, Drew Brees did not play well. He did not have a lot of zip on the fastball. The accuracy was not there. The Saints defense won that game and really made Tom Brady look foolish and not have a strong debut. I would not be surprised with Thomas Hurd to see the Raiders, very confident team after week number one, wouldn't be surprised to see the Raiders beat the Saints on Monday Night Football. Allen Robinson is clearly not happy with his contractual situation in Chicago. He unfollowed everything Bears on social media, changed the Twitter bio, and Allen Robinson's agent publicly stated that He is just not pleased in the last year of his contract. And listen, I think that Allen Robinson is a star. We named him on Time to Shine a top nine wide receiver in the National Football League this summer. And he should get a a contract equal to his ranking. Now, Robinson told the press today that his heart and his spirit has never wavered in terms of Chicago. But, I mean, you realize this guy has caught passes in the NFL from Blake Bortles and Mitch Trubisky? I mean, I would not take a penny under market value. This is a mess. Ryan Pace better get this done. Allen Robinson, not only a great player, a great guy. They must make sure He is paid like the star that he is. Richard Sherman is going on injured reserve. He's going to miss the next three games for the San Francisco 49ers. Calf strain. This is significant for a team that is already banged up at the wide receiver position. We're going to have to see if George Kittle is going to be able to go to San Francisco Sunday against the Jets. You played for Bruce Arians in Arizona, so... I'm fascinated to get your take on Coach Arians after the week one loss, throwing Tom Brady under the bus. Yeah, well, no one should be surprised. I've played for B.A. for three years when I was in Arizona and also when I was in Tampa Bay last year. B.A. goes after the biggest, baddest guy. And so he did the same thing uh, to Tom Brady that we're seeing right now. He got after him, just like he did it to Carson Palmer, to Andrew Luck, to Ben Roethlisberger, all the great quarterbacks he's ever coached. He makes sure that they understand he accepts nothing less than the best. And now that other players know he's going to get after Tom Brady like that, they understand they have to provide their best as well. It's an excellent point. And you also spent some time in Buffalo. Look, I love the Buffalo Bills, their culture. I love them this season to win the division. I'm curious to get your take on Buffalo and specifically my guy Josh Allen at the quarterback position. Yeah, well, a lot of people, what people don't realize about the Buffalo Bills is that this team has been built to win. They've been building a team to try and take down the longtime division rival New England Patriots for year after year after year. And so you go to their facility, everything you see there, it says playoff caliber. I was with the Bills for a little bit last year, and they have a playoff caliber team. And they understand from quarterback to receiver to that defense, they understand what it takes to win. And so I believe, uh, I think it's obviously – Playoffs are bust, but really Super Bowl are bust for this team now that New England has a different quarterback, not by the name of Tom Brady. Listen, I expect him to win the division. I expect him to win a playoff game or two. So I don't think that's exaggeration. We're in lockstep here on how good the Buffalo Bills could be and the brilliant job by Brandon Bean building that team. How about the Arizona Cardinals? Another team that I like a lot this year. Obviously, people associate you with Arizona all those years, doing a wonderful job playing linebacker for them. Kyler Murray's special. Still can't believe they got DeAndre Hopkins. How strong can this offense be? 
Well, I think we're actually a little bit early. I think people are overreacting to the big win that Arizona had against the San Francisco 49ers. People don't realize that the two other other teams in the NFC West, they won as well. The, those Seattle Seahawks and those LA Rams. And so, obviously, Arizona's a good team. Kenyon Drake in the backfield, Larry Fitzgerald, DeAndre Hopkins, Kyler Murray. They have a solid team and it's a solid offense. But you have to understand, when you have a division rival, you build your team just try to try to beat that division rival. And so I'm not overly impressed by the San Francisco win, though I am surprised, but I'm not overly impressed. I need to see them beat Seattle. I need to see them beat L.A. as well. Measured take. I appreciate that, even though I do like Arizona to make the playoffs this year. How about Mitch Trubisky and the Chicago Bears? You're in Chicago. You went up against him every day in practice. Give him credit for the fourth quarter. I... I am not a believer in Mitch Trubisky, Sam, in any way, shape, or form. That fourth quarter, was it a fluke after three quarters where he couldn't hit the broad side of a barn, or is that a harbinger of things to come? Yeah, well, I, I strongly and harshly disagree with you on this one, Adam, for two reasons. Number one, Mitch Trubisky, Mitch Trubisky single-handedly brought that team back in the game. Everybody talks about the great, coveted Bears defense. That defense did not show up. Not only last night, but also a good bit of last season, that defense wasn't showing up. And what you saw in that fourth quarter was Mitch Trubisky dropping dimes. He had three passes in particular. We're looking at one of them now that had a very low probability of being caught. He let his team down from 17 to go and win the game in the fourth quarter. And he did have some very precise throws in the third, second and third quarter as well. You look at uh, He had a couple throws to Allen Robinson where he made fingertip catches that were threading the needle once again. And so I'm high on Mitch Trubisky. I'm high on the Bears. I think they're the playoff team. I think a lot of people like you are a little bit high on the Arizona Cardinals. I don't think I don't see them in the playoffs at all. Wow, strong take. No Arizona Cardinals, and you like the Chicago Bears this year. I love it. Sam Ancho bringing the fire. Sam, I love talking to defensive ball players about Aaron Donald. I mean, you could name the Defensive Player of the Year award after him. This this cat is special. What makes him so dominant, and how is he going to fare against a Philadelphia Eagles team where the Eagles' offensive line was dreadful one week ago? Yeah, well, everybody talks about when, – when, when people bring up the name Aaron Donald, everyone talks about his quickness. Everyone talks about his lower body strength. Everybody talks about all the different intangibles. What no one is ever talking about with Aaron Donald are his hands, and not just the quick hands. I'm talking about winning – the first two seconds of the down. I had a coach named Vic Fangio. He's the head coach of the Denver Broncos now. He always talked about winning the first two seconds of the down, being the first to punch. And if you go back and watch Aaron Donald's film, he's always the first to punch. He's always winning the first two seconds of the down. And that's what makes him so special. That's what makes him so great. As far as what he's going to do with Philadelphia, they are going to see a lot of the same, what you saw him do uh, last week to Dallas as well, being all over the field sacking the quarterback, affecting the quarterback, affecting the pocket, affecting the run game. He's obviously a dominant player, but he's going to dominate as well this week.